Good evening. The hour is now 630. I am calling the meeting of the St. Louis County Council to order Tuesday, February 9th, 2021. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, of the United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it, for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under, under God. God. Indivisible, indivisible with, liberty with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Yes, ma'am. Council Member Days. Here. Council Member Dunaway. Present. Council Member Fitch. Here. Council Member Webb. Here. Council Member Clancy. Present. Council Member Trakis. Present. Council Member Harder. Present. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you very much. Council, Council Member Clancy, do you have a comment? Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, as you know, I continue to object to your assertion that you are the chair of this body. Um, as does our own legal counsel. If you wish to pres preside over tonight's meeting, go ahead. We need to continue county business to the best of our ability with as little interruption as possible, but I do need the um, record to reflect my continued objection. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Trakis. Yes, thank you, Councilwoman Days. Let the record reflect that I concur and join in Councilwoman Clancy's objection. In addition, I want the record to reflect in the citizens of St. Louis County to understand that Councilwoman Day's ongoing attempt to usurp the power and authority of the chair is premature and inappropriate at this time. By issuing changes to committee assignments, council rules and scheduling committee of the whole hearings, Councilwoman Day seeks to perpetuate the impression that she is the lawful chair of this body. Nothing is further from the truth. In point of fact, the question of who is the lawful chair is before the Circuit Court of St. Louis County. Until that court rules on the question, it is my belief that Councilwoman Clancy is the lawful elected chair. To act otherwise only sows division, compounds, and complicates an already untenable situation. To continue to do so is an affront to the rule of law and disrespects and undermines the integrity of the council. Moreover, not only is Councilwoman Days not the chair, she cannot and will never be the chair in 2021. This is because regardless of how the court rules on the question of whether council terms extended as provided by the charter, a quorum was present at the January 5th, 2021 meeting of the council. At that meeting, the council was required by the charter to elect a chair and vice chair. Failing to do so means that only a presiding officer as often as weekly, can be selected by the council for the remainder of 2021. So Councilwoman Days can only ever be presiding officer, and that, if and only if, the court determines that Councilwoman Gray's term did not carry over to January 12th, 2021. As such, I suggest, suggest and strongly urge Councilwoman Days to cease her attempts to exercise the authority of chair until the court issues its ruling. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion uh, for approval of the journal of the meeting of January 26, 2021? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries the January 26 journal is approved. We will hold on the February 2nd journal until we have had an opportunity to thoroughly look at that. We have no bid openings this evening, so we will move to communications. Madam Chair, we have no tax compromises, zoning matters, or road and bridge matters this evening, so we will move to other communications. Under other communications, item number one. Receive and file. That will be the same motion through number four. Thank you, Madam Chair. One moment. That will be the order. Thank you. Thank you. Item number five. Receive file and the appropriation transfers be approved as requested. Uh, second. Is there a second? 
Second. Uh, before I uh, get the vote here, I want to make the statement that there are several pages of transfers associated with this, and the many of the council members have not had an opportunity to look at this. We know that there is a time constraint here, but we need to make sure that we have an opportunity to look at all of these transfers and to, to uh, deep dive uh, deeply into them and see where they're going. So with that, we will do that this evening. I will go ahead and do that this evening, but please, uh, for the uh, benefit of this body, the budget direction is is um, is uh, is forewarned that we will not do that again. Uh, we have had a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item number six. Receive file and the appropriation transfers be approved as requested. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. No. Motion carries. Item number seven, sixth district. Receive and file. So ordered. Item number eight, sixth district. Receive file and replace the replacement deposit agreement be approved as recommended. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Item number nine, second district. Receive, file, and refer to the Department of Transportation and Public Works, Department of Planning, and the County Counselor. So ordered. Item number 10, all districts. Receive and file, that will be the same motion uh, through number 11, and that will be the order. Item number 12, fourth district. Receive, file, and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Same for 13. So ordered. Item number 14, fifth district. Receive, file, and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Same motion through item number 17. So ordered. Item number 18, sixth district. C file and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 19, 7th district. Receive, file, and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 20, 2nd district. Receive, file, and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 21, third district. Receive file and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 22, third district. Receive file and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 23, sixth district. Receive file, the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 24. Receive file and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Um, so ordered. We will talk about that later, but so ordered at this particular point. Thank you. Item number 25, 2nd, 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th districts. Receive, file, and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 26, 1st district. Receive, file, contract in an amount not to exceed $1,971,000. $1,971,967.85 be award, approved and awarded to NB West Contracting Company, the lowest responsive bidder as recommended. An authorization for revision to the existing traffic control devices be approved as requested. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Item number 27, 6th District. Receive file contract in an amount not to exceed $1,252,650 be approved and awarded to Pace Construction Company, LLC, lowest responsive bidder. As recommended, 
an authorization for revision to the existing traffic control devices be approved as requested, please. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 28, sixth district. Steve, file contract in an amount not to exceed $1,092,755.49 approved and awarded to LF Krupp Construction Incorporated, the lowest responsive bidder as recommended, an authorization for revision to the existing traffic control devices, be approved as requested, please. Is there a second? Second. Harder. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 29, all districts. Uh, receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. And this will also, uh, Councilwoman Clancy, be referred back to committee as was previously uh, discussed. So ordered. I'm sorry, what, what was that? Is this being referred to? No, uh, it, this was from last year, Madam Clerk. And when, once we get a, um, a, a consensus of those involved, it is supposed to go back to the committee to review the substitute. I see. All right. Thank you. Okay. Item number 30, First District. Receive file on the county council to be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and a copy of this report be sent to the city of Pagedale and that will be the order. Moving on to add-ons, Madam Chair, item number one, First and Seventh Districts. Receive file on the county council to be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and that will be the order. Item number two, third district. Receive file and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number three, fourth district. Receive file and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number four, fifth district. Receive file and refer to the Board of Police Commissioners, the Civil Service Commission, the Chief of Police, and the Director of Personnel and Human Resources. So ordered. <coughs> um, this is where we have the report of the County Executive. I'm assuming the County Executive will not be attending yes. this evening. Um, Councilwoman. Um, excuse me. Um, um, have you heard point from of the order, County please. Executive? Just a second. Uh, Madam Clerk, have you heard from the County Executive? No, I have not, Madam Chair. Councilwoman Clancy? Yes, the county executive um, let me know that he was not able to make it and has provided a statement that I will share with the public at this time on his behalf. Um, Please continue. Good evening. St. Louis County has been a leader in responding to this pandemic, and that includes setting up sites to provide access to life-saving vaccine. Unfortunately, the state is impeding our efforts. The state had previously announced it would provide weekly supplies of the vaccine, but St. Louis County has now gone three weeks without a new supply from the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services, and we have no assurances we will get any more from the state. As you can imagine, this is causing concern and anxiety in the community. The Department of Public Health has 280,000 people on its pre-registration list. We were on track today to get through the last of our doses for those receiving their first shot. This slowdown will not affect those who are due for a second appointment. We have enough vaccine to cover those appointments, so please keep them. We are expected to get 1,950 doses from our hospital partners this week to let us continue vaccinating, but the process will be slowed greatly. At this point, we are encouraging everyone who has signed up on the county's list to also sign up on hospital lists. It could be weeks, even months, before St. Louis County can get to you. Without any clear commitments from the state, this is sadly where we are today. With the lack of communication and broken promises, it is incredibly difficult to plan a distribution network and effectively communicate with those who have signed up and are anxiously awaiting an appointment. More importantly, it puts at further risk the population DPH serves, including people who are uninsured or underinsured, people who do not have a primary care physician, and others who are uniquely at risk and vulnerable to COVID-19. Many of the people who need the vaccine the most simply will not have access to the vaccine. 
This is unacceptable. Last week, DPH expanded its vaccination operation, opening four additional sites for a total of five. The county now offers vaccinations at John C. Murphy, Murphy Health Center in Berkeley, the Florissant and Valley campus of St. Louis Community College in Ferguson, and the fire districts in Afton, Eureka, and Melville. How robust those operations will be moving forward depends on the state. Last week alone, DPH was able to vaccinate about 5,100 people. That is significantly higher than the 2,500 vaccinated during the previous week. Our Department of Public Health has stepped up, met the challenge, and demonstrated true leadership. They have received high praise from the community for creating a smooth process at the vaccination sites. So let's not all let this good work get sidetracked by poor delivery out of Jefferson City. I urge each of you on the council, every elected leader in St. Louis County, to ask for answers and to fight for those who elected you. This is our moment to unite to get real results for those we serve. I know that a committee hearing is planned for Dr. Rand Randall Williams to appear before this council and explain the state process for vaccine distribution. I look forward to hearing what he has to say. The more people we have vaccinated, the faster we can reopen the county and get our economy chugging again. We did announce earlier today that St. Louis County will allow businesses including restaurants and bars, to expand capacity to 50% beginning Thursday at 12.01 a.m. The change comes with a decrease in cases and improvement of associated metrics, including hospitalizations. These improved numbers, along with continued strong compliance with public health orders, gives the Department of Public Health confidence that relaxing this restriction is the right move at this time. We have been measured and thoughtful in our response to this pandemic and listened closely to our various advisory groups on how to reopen our businesses in a way that is safe to employees and customers. DPH has worked closely with this restaurant advisory group, which led to reopening restaurants at 25% capacity on January 4th and relaxing curfew to 11 p.m. from 10 p.m. on February 1st. The Department of Public Health still considers indoor dining a risky activity, and St. Louis County's Safer at Home order, as amended, remains in place. It went into effect on November 17th. I remain confident that the state can get on track and get more people in St. Louis County vaccinated. It is up to all of us to make sure that happens. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I do know that we are looking to have a committee of the whole with Dr. Williams on Tuesday. I believe that was your request, Councilwoman Clancy. So we are working forward, uh, working toward that at this particular point. So thank you so very much. Uh, we're going to move on to public forum right now. Madam Clerk, how many uh, registered speakers do we have? We have 10 speakers this evening. Thank you very much. Uh, when your name is announced, um, the clerk will call your name um, and then you will begin speaking. You will have three minutes. Uh, at one point, we did think that we could, uh, you could see those three minutes, but the uh, clerk will make an announcement about that. I think we misspoke on last evening, but please give us your name, uh, your last name, your first name, and your zip code for the record. So with that, Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam Chair, I wanted to clear up last week when I mentioned that uh, the speakers could now see the timer on the screen. Uh, what I did find out is that if you have the agenda pulled up on your computer, you will see the timer at the bottom of the page. If you don't have the agenda pulled up, you cannot see the timer. So I will still announce when your three minutes is up, but for those who have the agenda pulled up, you'll be able to follow along with the timer. I apologize for that uh, mistake last week. So, no worries. So please okay. continue. Thank you. Thank you. So our first speaker this evening is Dennis Perouche, followed by Pamela Knox. Hello, Dennis Perouche, 63128. Please uh, proceed, wanna, sir. Yeah, first I want to say kudos to the County COVID vaccine registration site. I've talked to a lot of family, friends, and coworkers who registered. All positive feedback. Nobody reported any issues, especially since uh, the uh, email went out this week confirming people were registered. And Dr. Page, I know he's not here, but thank you. A couple of weeks ago on the county council meeting, you shared the 
county older residents program information for those without access to computers on how to register. So thank you for doing that. And then second, Dr. Page, I encourage you to consider the World Health Organization's latest guidelines on COVID-19 from Wednesday, January 20th. The new guidelines warned about high risk of false positives and explain that tests should be used as an aid for diagnosis and healthcare professionals must consider clinical observations. So please use that to consider opening our county businesses as soon as possible. 50% is a step in the right direction, but we need to hit 100%. To the entire council regarding council leadership, I was perplexed. The council allowed a person to participate and vote on council leadership after their term expired. Clearly, council leadership should be elected by members serving during their terms. Save our tax dollars, drop the lawsuits. Finally, council member days, I must comment on your home office setup. I love your workspace for these council meetings. It's very true to life for so many of us who make do for these remote meetings from our homes. <laughs> Everyone, thank you for your time. Have a great evening. <laughs> thank you. Oh, dear. Next is Pamela Knox, followed by Alexis Williams. Ms. Knox, a comment in regards to a rezoning concern. There was a zone for a restaurant and drive through on Gravelay where the burger and breakfast restaurant is now. I understand that through the consuls or through the com zoning committee that this zoning was changed and it was changed to, I understand, a car wash would like to start a business there. I feel, I feel that a car wash would be number one, an eyesore to the community, as we already have three within the area of two miles. And it would do no good to the majority of the people in our area. I'd like to see this being reconsidered and go back to what it was originally zoned for, which was a restaurant and a drive through that definitely would serve the community. We have three major high schools, four actually major high schools within a radius of five miles. We have numerous new homes being built in the area and we're very short on restaurants. We know we're gonna lose the breakfast and burgers and I'd like to see it still be appropriate for a restaurant. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Alexis Williams, followed by Joan Smith Lauer. Yeah, it appears we're having. Maybe we can ask Ms. Williams if she can submit her comments if, if they're written or make some other arrangements for that because we're not being we're not able to hear her. We're going to reach out to you by email. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman. Yes, this is Jen, if I might just um, Alexis Williams is the attorney in the county counselor's office that you all will be honoring with a resolution later on in the meeting this evening. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we're, we're sorry that we could not hear you, but we, you will get our congratulations a little later. All right. Thank you. So Joan Smith Lauer is next, followed by Carla Gruy. Hi, my name is Joan Smith Lauer. Hopefully you can hear me without the noise that I just heard. Yes, we can hear you, Ms. Lauer. Okay, thank you. I live in 63123 for the last 24 years. <clears throat> I spoke at last week's meeting regarding the 
building of several facilities around District 6 that the, the neighborhood is not comfortable with, the neighborhood website, many, many people are saying, why do we have so many car washes, just like the lady over on, was speaking about over on Gravoy? Why do we have so many oil change places? Why do we have so many storage units as well as banks? Unincorporated St. Louis County should not be devalued with putting all this nonsense in. Where I live, we have recently lost three restaurants, Jack in the Box, Steak and Shake, and Taco Bell. I want to see where this study is that someone here in St. Louis has done to show that we need another oil change place closest to my house, which is at Lindbergh and 21. There's a car X right across the street from that. To me, that doesn't make sense. I have a retail background, and when we opened stores, we did a marketing study. Who is it in this council or in St. Louis that has done a study as to what is best needed in this community? And who is it there? Where is it that I can read this or study it? We are intelligent people here in unincorporated St. Louis County, and we have a right to speak for what we want. We want what the neighborhood wants which isn't whatever is left over from someone else. Also on the neighborhood website, I see over in Crestwood now, which doesn't pertain to me or you perhaps, but they're taking down a, a restaurant and putting up a storage facility. Like, wow, we need another one of them. Anyway, I'll sum this up by saying, where is the study? Who is it that does this? And can we see where it is that you show that this facility, this area needs another oil change and another car wash after they're going out of business in our area. Thank you very much, I'll see you all next week. Thank you. Next is Carla Gruy, followed by Josh Schur. Okay, thank you. This is Carla Gruy, and my zip code is six. I wanted to talk about something today that is rarely ever reported. In fact, I'm thinking that most people who haven't looked it up on their own probably don't realize it because the media, including what's coming from our own county, is focused on smoke and mirrors and it doesn't matter how many cases of a virus there are there's a virus every single year and in fact what really matters no one ever talks about but the death rate has not increased it hasn't increased in st louis county it hasn't increased in missouri and it hasn't increased in the united states so all this fear mongering over a virus that has a survival rate of greater than the seasonal flu, it's really disgusting. And the pain and the suffering that's being caused with all this smoke and mirrors, it really needs to stop. And I hope that the council members and everyone who's listening today will focus on the fact that the death rate is not up. They can call the coronavirus a pandemic all they want, but there is not an increase in death. And so it's time to acknowledge that our business owners and our residents can be trusted to keep their distance and to use healthy sanitation protocols just like they always have. It's time to allow people who feel sick to stay home. And for those who feel healthy to go to school, to play in the game and to get back to their lives. There are untold losses that I pray, Sam Page, you and your power hungry, 
health appointees are held to account one day. This should be brought before a jury. The depression and the horrible anxiety that's being caused and the unnecessary suicides, these lay squarely on your shoulders. And I sincerely hope that you will stop what you've been doing, allow people to get back to their lives and, and stop with the fear mongering and have everyone who's responsible for the public here in St. Louis County recognize the death count is not up. We can live our lives like this. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Josh Shearer, followed by Johanna Bodine. Great, thank you. Uh, Josh Shear, 63011. Well, I guess Sam Page is at how someone can sleep at night, having two incomes while putting so many restaurants out of business and countless amount of people on unemployment, but uh, here we are. Anyway, thank you, Mark Harder, and those that supported the loosening of the restrictions of the restaurants. I appreciate the support and effort to get back to pre-COVID hysteria, but this is uh, honestly not going to satisfy we the people. The marketing campaign surrounding COVID was impressive, but the truth shall be your downfall. Over 99% survival rate, 94% of COVID deaths have two or more comorbidities. Hospitals and urgent care centers are just simply empty. I've driven by them. I've seen them with my own eyes. The World Health Organization admitting the PCR tests produced countless amounts of false positives and then finally lowered their testing threshold to in turn produce less positive cases. Science that we have known and been yelling about for the last six months at least. The actual science, not the inaccurate and ever-changing fraud Fauci deep state science. No studies to support mask wearing is effective, literally none, quite the contrary actually, and Sam Page being a quote-unquote doctor should be well aware of this. There are no studies to support social distancing is effective. Literally, again, none. And who in God's name stands that close to strangers anyway when they're out and about? We aren't children. <laughs> and you all are not our parents or our masters. No studies to support lockdowns were effective. Again, none. And again, quite the contrary. Sam Page. You as a doctor should be up to date on the current scientific journals and or studies provi uh, proving that lockdowns do more harm than good. Why are restaurants at 50% capacity, but large retail and grocery stores are at 100%? Makes no sense. Mark Harder, as much as we appreciate your efforts to assist in opening up the restaurants to 50%, to share percent open and, and no more ineffective masks yes dan i'm sorry you we lost you for just a second oh go i'm ahead. sorry uh, go ahead i was getting a phone call uh again uh sam page you as a doctor should be up to date on the current scientific journals and studies providing uh, uh proving lockdowns do more harm than good why restaurants are at 50 percent and retail and grocery stores are at 100 percent? i have no idea Mark Harder, as much as we appreciate your efforts to assist in the opening up of restaurants to 50%, which I know now has been done, we want all or nothing. And that means 100% open. Madam and Chair, that's three minutes. Next is Johanna Bodine, followed by Lynn LeBob. Hi, this is Johanna Bodine. I live in 63005. Um, three points I wanted to make tonight. I really request from the bottom of St. Louis taxpayers' hearts, please stop the nonsense around the city council, who's the chair, who's not. Let's move forward. Trick is clancy. I don't know what point you're trying to prove at this point in time. None of us care. None of us 
believe that Lisa Clancy should be chair and you should be co-chair, Ernie Trakis. We don't care. Stop wasting our tax dollars. Secondly, I would just like to support the resolution that Mark Carter brought forward and to um, reiterate what Jess Shear just said. Um, we need to get back 100%. There are the economic inequity that is occurring right now because of people who are not able to work um, also means that their children aren't able to go to school in person. And there will be a long-term lasting impact due to this nonsense. As um, Ms. Gruy said as well, it's just completely unnecessary. At this point, we are fear-mongering and Frankly, the statement that was read from Dr. Page this evening um, was more of the same. And if there are people who are concerned about their health and safety, want to get the vaccine, there have been counties across the state of Missouri who have been successfully providing the vaccine to their communities through their health departments through um, county sites, public open sites to get vaccinated for over a month. What is happening in St. Louis County is not the failure of Jefferson City. It is the failure of St. Louis County. And it is disgraceful that we have paid at this point a couple hundred thousand dollars in projected salaries to ex-political friends of Sam Page for what? Not for increased better vaccination for the residents of St. Louis County, not for better protection, for sure. The nonsense in this county needs to stop. And Mark Carter, I would support a resolution for 100% back not 50%. So let's bring that one next week. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Lynn Labob, followed by Nancy Rorden. Uh, Madam Clerk, Lynn is not on. So if we can move on to Nancy, we'll have to reach out to Lynn, but I, she's dropped off. Okay, we will do that. Thank you. Can you hear me? We can, please proceed. Great. After almost a year of social distancing, we have a mental health crisis in young adults and others. Social distancing has changed development and socialization for these age groups. They need hugs, handshakes, eye contact, smiles, high fives. They need to be treated like humans, not Petri dishes. Many are replacing real connections with false connections like drugs, alcohol, and other unhealthy substitutes. Others are just giving up and ending it. We all understand the need to protect the vulnerable. And there is more than one group of vulnerable right now. We need to open up for these younger humans. They need the masks off for strenuous activities. We open up clubs and school activities other than sports. We need in-person counseling. We need to change the quarantine policy in schools to match the state. Other states like Ohio made this change and their numbers continue to decrease. We have to follow the science and give them the best life possible while being responsible to the others that are vulnerable. County council has to represent the voters. The stunts of late only continue to embarrass St. Louis County. You cannot possibly be proud of yourselves. Orchestrating a takeover to retain power with former Councilwoman Gray, then hiring her to do a job she's just not qualified for. All of this on top of a county auditor that was never qualified to do his job and never attempted it. I thought you were going to do better than Stanger. The cooling off period suggested by new Councilwoman Shalonda Webb is a brilliant idea and practice to stop this endless pay to play merry go round. Well done on web for the proposal. This is good common practice. 
Webb's proposal was quickly imitated by Clancy and Trachis, who recognized the brilliance and attempted to claim it. It took an outsider to see it first. This is why we need new vision. Thank you, Shalanda Webb. Now, paying lobbyists to go to Jefferson City to protect the Clancy Page power structure. Lobbyists to try to cut more backroom deals. You're sending them to protect your power structure. Why don't you send them to try to get more immunizations for St. Louis County instead? That's something we could all get behind. You left the voters no other route than to restore checks and balances, yet you still try to control the outcome. Maybe you could listen for a change. Maybe you could trust that your way is not the only way. The constant sense that you are the only people who can save the county is pure arrogance and elite thinking. The world will continue whether or not you have all the power. You have good, smart people around you. It's time to stop with the antics and make a new plan to strengthen St. Louis County. There is so much work to do. If you want your constituents to unify and stop with the partisan Madam identity Chair, politics. that's three minutes. Our next speaker is S.J. Stenger. Thank you. I hope you can hear me. This message is by teletype from Yankton, FPC. Evening. Stevie Stenger here. Five seven zero seven eight. Sam, while you are absent and likely on your second job, Sam Page, pot, meat, cattle. I see you are following in my footsteps. See you soon, Ernie. Do you still want a separate attorney? For the council? I guess not. Or your harassment settlements become impossible. Why did former Chairwoman Clancy think it was not important to follow the charter last year? With regard to Sam working a second job, or even now? This smacks of hypocrisy. If Charlie Dewey worked two jobs as executive, there would have been an inquisition. But since it was Sam, it was determined, not worthy of an investigation, by Beth the Conciliere, or Wesley. Lisa Clancy once said, she did not want to be seen stepping over a black woman, and she hasn't, because Sam, Winston Calvert, and the public eyes of the region likely use the signal app too. Please do not evoke the name of the Ferguson Commission without doing the work when you have the power to do so. Likely, with Mama Bear's misinterpreted guidance, Lisa has stepped on not just one, but three black women to date that we know of. Hazel, Rochelle, and Rita. How does Lisa fight for Hillary, Warren, Harris, and others while allowing black women to be treated like this, especially during a pandemic? Why be a progressive when you can progressively wrest control from those who want equity? Thank you. Madam Chair, that is all the speakers. Thank you very much to uh, all of those constituents who took the time to uh, give us um, their perspectives. Moving on to introduction of bills. Proceeding with introduction, Madam Chair. Bill number 42, introduced by Council Member Trachis. An ordinance amending ordinance number 26,832 by repealing and reenacting section 3 pertaining to PC 09 16 3623 Lee May Ferry Road LLC and 3705 Lee May Ferry LLC, Suntrup Lee May Ferry. Bill number 43 introduced by Council Member Clancy. An ordinance amending chapter 105. 
Title I, St. Louis County Revised Ordinances, 1974, as amended, County Municipal Courts, by repealing and reenacting Section 105.080 pertaining to court costs. Bill number 44, introduced by Councilmember Dunaway, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute an agreement with the Missouri Prairie Foundation for a prairie planting project in Creevecore Park and authorizing the director of the Department of Parks and Recreation to execute additional necessary documents. Bill number 45, introduced by Councilmember Harder. An ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute a contract with T-Mobile Central LLC for lease of antenna space on the telecommunications tower located in Greensfelder Park and repealing ordinance number 20,387. Bill number 46, introduced by Councilmember Clancy. An ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $450,000 from the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services, appropriating the same for support of the Department of Public Health's Ending the HIV Epidemic and STD Clinics Project, and authorizing the County Executive and the Director of the Department of Public Health to execute necessary documents. Bill number 47, introduced by Councilor Clancy, an ordinance amending ordinance number 27,648 by repealing and reenacting section one pertaining to a maternal child health services grant from the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services, DHSS, and authorizing the county executive and the director of the Department of Public Health to execute necessary documents. Bill number 48 introduced by council members Days and Clancy an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute a contract with Oates Associates Incorporated for design consulting services related to a building envelope repairs project at the police department headquarters and police and fire training center, project number 20-03-OC, and authorizing the director of transportation and public works to execute necessary documents. Bill number 49, introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance appropriating and setting up. By the Missouri Sir. State Auditor. Uh, Kevin, would you reread that one? I think you kind of uh, went out on that one for a minute. That's 49. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank Excuse you. Me. Bill number 49 introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance appropriating and setting apart the amount of $292,376 from the unappropriated balance of the general fund for support of audit services provided by the Missouri State Auditor. Bill number 50 introduced by Council Member Fitch, an ordinance amending the approved and adopted budget for the general fund for fiscal year 2021 by reducing the total appropriation to said fund in the amount of $150,000 as provided herein. Bill number 51 introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance amending Chapter 202 Title II, St. Louis County Revised Ordinances, 1974 as amended, personnel classified service by repealing and reenacting sections 202.360, 202.365, and 202.366, each pertaining to various pay range structures. Bill number 52, introduced by council member Webb, an emergency ordinance authorizing the county counselor to execute a contract with Donnell Smith and Associates LLC to provide legal services in the matter of the legal action identifies, identified as cause number 21SL-CC00193 in St. Louis County Circuit Court in declaring an emergency. Madam, Madam Chair, that is all the bills. Was that Jen? Genevieve, was that you? I'm sorry. 
No, ma'am, it wasn't me. Uh, I'm oh. waiting on perfection, Madam Chair. This oh, okay. Is We're moving on to perfection of bills. Bill number 20, yeah. introduced by Council Member Harder. Please hold bill number 20. Bill number 20 is held. Bill number 32, introduced by Council Member Trakas. Move to hold bill number 32. Bill number 32 is held. Bill number 266, introduced by Council Members Fitch and Harder. I move to hold bill 266. Bill 266 is held. Bill number 267, introduced by Council Members Fitch and Harder. I move to hold Bill 267. Bill 267 is held. <clears throat> bill number 302, introduced by Council Members Dunaway and Walton Gray. I move to hold Bill number 302. Bill number 302 is held. Bill number 33. Introduced by Council Member Days. I move to perfect Bill number 33. Is there a second? Second. Harder. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Bill number 33 is perfected. Bill number 34, introduced by Council Member Days. I move to perfect Bill number 34. Is there a second? Second. Harder. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Bill number 34 is perfected. Bill number 35, introduced by Council Member Days. I move to perfect Bill number 35. Is there a second? Second. Harder. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. no. Bill number 35 is perfected. Bill number 36, introduced by Council Member Days. I move to perfect Bill number 36. Is there a second? Second. Harder. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Bill number 36 is perfected. Bill number 37, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move to perfect Bill 37. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Bill number 37 is perfected. Bill number 38, introduced by Council Member Harder and Dunaway. I move for, to perfect bill number 38. Is there a second? second? Second, Fitch. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. no. Motion carries. Bill number 38 is perfected. Bill number 39, introduced by Council Member Fitch. I move to perfect bill number 39. Is there second. a second? Second. Harder. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Bill number 39 is perfected. Bill number 41, introduced by Council members, Council members Trachis, Dunaway, and Clancy. Madam Chair, I move we have perfect. a substitute. I'm sorry, go ahead. <clears throat> Excuse me. Madam Chair, we have a substitute bill. Please read the substitute. Substitute bill number one for bill number 41, introduced by council members Trachis, Dunaway, and Clancy, an emergency ordinance authorizing the county councilor to execute a contract with Hush Blackwell LLP to provide legal services in the matter of the legal action identified as cause number 21SL-CC00193 in St. Louis County Circuit Court and declaring an emergency. I move to advance sub bill number one for bill number 41 to take um, uh, on the um, order of perfection. I'm sorry, um, we, we need to adopt the substitute first. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Can I move to adopt this, the uh, sub bill. Uh, is there a second? Second. Second, Clancy. Discussion, Madam Chair. Discussion, Councilman Fitch. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, the substitute bill being offered by Councilman Trakis um, conflicts with a substitute bill we'll take up on the final passage order bill for Bill 40. Substitute Bill 1 for Bill 40, which will be taken up on the final passage, uh, was agreed to uh, today by the St. Louis County Councilor Beth Orwick. 
and uh, the attorneys uh, representing Councilwoman Days, Councilman Harder, and myself. They worked that out today. That will be on. I'm not. I'm not understanding why there is a substitute bill for Bill 41. If Councilman Frankus would like to explain that, I'd be happy to. Um, I asked for the Council sub bill. Councilman Trakis, you're recognized. I'd be happy to uh, respond. The sub bill I requested was in the off chance that your sub bill number 40, Mr. Fitch, um, you chose not to move. If I understand you correctly, based on your statement, you intend to move uh, your bill, your sub bill for bill number 40 through to final passage tonight, is that correct? Yes, sir. Very well, then I'll hold uh, sub bill number 41, madam. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, sub bill number 41 is held. Moving on to final uh, passage. I'm sorry. Councilwoman Days, I think actually that uh, since the sub bill wasn't adopted, it would the proper motion would be to hold the bill itself, the underlying bill. Oh, bill. Okay, Very well, I, I move to hold bill number 41. Bill number 41 is held. Thank you so Thank much, you. Genevieve. Moving on to Madam Chair. Yes. I would like to move to enact rule 19 to suspend rule six in order to advance bill number 52 to the perfection order of business. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. Discussion. Discussion. Um, with all due Councilman respect Krakus. to Council, thank you. With all due respect to Councilwoman Webb, I fail to see the need for or appropriateness of bill number 51, I'm sorry, 52. Um, it's my understanding that a contract has been executed and is legally valid that has already retained her attorney uh, in connection with the matter pending before the court regarding council leadership. So I see no purpose in bill number 52. Uh, mm -hmm. Councilwoman uh, Webb, do you have a response or do you wish to move on? This discussion was noted, I would like to move on. Thank you. There has been, it has been moved and second that rule 19, that we enact rule 19 to suspend rule number six. There was a second, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. 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 Chairs in doubt, roll call, please. Council member Days. Aye. Council member Dunaway. Nay. Council member Fitch. Aye. Council member Webb. Aye. Council member Clancy. I'm sorry, nay. Council member Trakis. No. Council member Harder. Yes. Madam Chair, on the motion to enact Rule 19 to suspend Rule six to advance bill number 52 to the perfection order of business there are four ayes and three no's the motion carries madam chair yes i move to perfect bill number 52 is there a second second harder discussion discussion councilman trachis thank you um let the record reflect that uh, there's absolutely, unless someone is prepared to articulate um, that I'm wrong and that Councilwoman Webb's attorney has not been retained and there is not a valid contract executed by the county, county councilor already in existence, um, retaining the services of the firm that Councilwoman Webb selected to represent her, this bill is totally inappropriate and a waste of time in theater. And I strongly oppose it. And I urge all of you to vote no, because it is just um, completely unnecessary and inappropriate. Thank you. Any um, further discussion? Yes, Councilman Days. Um, I, I also am curious about this. There was not, um, I, I had not heard from Councilman Webb's office about this bill, and I had the same question. So if, um, I would appreciate if Councilman Webb is willing to at least answer the question if she has already retained counsel and is under contract with counsel already. That would um, help inform my vote. 
Council Woman Webb, do you choose to respond? Yes, ma'am. Please proceed. And as everyone is aware, there is a question surrounding any vote taken on January 5th council meeting. I believe that the votes taken on that day, including the vote for council chair, are subject to be deemed invalid by either the circuit court or the council. While this matter is currently before the co court, it is important to me to protect not only my interests, but the interests of my attorney that agreed to take my case at a reduced rate for taxpayers who will ultimately foot foot the bill, excuse me, will ultimately foot, foot the bill for this situation. I did not ask to be put in this situation as I have said time and time again. However, I will not retreat from my duties to protect the interests of the people of the 4th District. It is also my responsibility to ensure that my attorney be compensated for the work that he has put forth in this case. If I believe that the vote for the county chair was invalid on January 5th, I must question every vote that was made on that date. I am asking that this legislation be passed for the protection of my interests, of myself and my attorney, who is working hard to protect the interests of the people of the 4th District. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any further discussion? It has been moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 Chairs in doubt, roll call, please. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. No. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Nay. Council Member Trakis. No. Council Member Harder. Yes. Madam Chair, on the motion to perfect bill number 52, there are four ayes and three noes. Um, motion carries. Um, the bill is perfected. Madam Chair? Yes. I move to advance building bill 52 to take up on the final passage, passage order of business. Is there a second? Second. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. 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 If there's in doubt, please call the roll. And this is, Madam uh, Clerk, is where we will need seven votes. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yes, ma'am. Well, call the roll just to make sure. Okay. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Nay. Oh. You know what? One moment. Let me pardon me on that. Council Member Days, you were aye. Council Member Dunaway, you were no. Thank you. Council Member Fitch? Aye. Council Member Webb? Aye. Council Member Clancy? Um I'm going to abstain from this. I, I, um, you know, I would appreciate, I would have appreciated some more information prior to the vote tonight at this point. So I'm going to abstain from um, advancing the final passage. Council member Trakis. No. Council member Harder. Aye. Madam chair on the motion to advance bill number 52 to take <coughs> up on the final passage order of business. There are four eyes, two against and one abstention. Um, the bill fails to advance to the final per, uh, passage order of business, so it will appear on the final uh, passage agenda for next week. Moving on to final passage. Madam Chair? Yes. Okay. Bill number 320 introduced by Council Member Clancy. Um, please hold Bill 320. Bill 320 is held. Bill number 14, introduced by council members Trachis, Days, Dunaway, Fitch, Walton Gray, Clancy, and Harder. Move to hold bill number 14, please. Bill number 14 is held. Substitute bill number one for bill number 76, introduced by council members Dunaway and Harder. 
I move to hold substitute bill number one for bill number 76. Substitute bill number one for uh, bill number 76 is held. Bill number 202 introduced by council member Clancy. Uh, we're still engaging with stakeholders on this um, around the preparation of a substitute bill. So we will hold this for now still. Thank you. Bill number 202 is held. And as I said earlier, once the uh, you have worked out whatever you need to do with the stakeholders, it will return back to committee. Bill number 220 introduced by council member Trakas. Move to hold bill number 220, please. Bill number 220 is held. Bill number 25 introduced by council member days. I move for final passage of bill number 25. Is there a second? Second, Carter. Roll call, please. Council member days. Aye. Council member Dunaway. Aye. Council member Fitch. Aye. Council member Webb. Aye. Council member Clancy. Aye. Council member Trakas. Aye. Council member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on bill number 25, there are seven ayes. Bill number 25 five is finally passed. Bill number 26 introduced by council member days. I move a final passage of bill number 26. Is there a second? Second, Carter. Roll call, please. Councilmember Days. Aye. Councilmember Dunaway. Aye. Councilmember Fitch. Aye. Councilmember Webb. Aye. Councilmember Clancy. Aye. Councilmember Trakas. Aye. Councilmember Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on bill number 26, there are seven ayes. Bill number 26 is finally passed. Bill number 27, introduced by council member days. I move for final passage of bill number 27. Is there a second? Second, Harder. Roll call, please. Council member days. Aye. Council member Dunaway. Aye. Councilmember Fitch? Aye. Councilmember Webb? Aye. Councilmember Clancy? Aye. Councilmember Trakas? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill number 27, there are seven ayes. Bill number 27 is finally passed. Bill number 28, introduced by Council Member Dunaway. I move for final passage of bill number 28. Is there a second? Second. second Roll call, please. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Council Member Clancy? Aye. Council Member Trakas? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 28, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 28 is finally passed. Bill Number 29, introduced by Council Member Trakas. Move for final passage of Bill Number 29, please. Is there a second? Second. Fifth. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Council Member Days. Aye. Council, excuse me, Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakas. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 29, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 29 is finally passed. Bill Number 30, introduced by Council Member Harder. I move for final passage of Bill Number 30. Is there a second? 
Second, Fitch. Roll call, please. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on bill number 30, there are seven ayes. Bill number 30 is finally passed. Bill number 31, introduced by Council Member Days. I move for final passage of bill number 31. Is there a second? Second, wet. Roll call, please. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Abstain. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 31, there are six ayes and one abstention. Bill Number 31 is finally passed. Bill Number 40, introduced by Council Member Council Members Fitch, Days, and Harder. Madam Chair, we have a substitute bill. Please read the substitute. Substitute bill number one for bill number 40, introduced by council members Fitch, Days, and Harder. An emergency ordinance authorizing the county councilor to execute a contract with Hush Blackwell LLP to provide for legal services rendered to council members Fitch, Days, and Harder, sued in their official capacities in the matter of the legal action identified as cause number 21 SL dash CC. 00193 in St. Louis County Circuit Court and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I move for the adoption of substitute bill number one for bill number 40. Is there a second? Second, second Harder. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The substitute has been adopted. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to advance substitute bill number one for bill number 40 to take up on the final passage order of business. Second. Is there a second? Second. Harder. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The bill has moved to final passage. Madam Chair, I move for final passage of substitute bill number one for bill number 40. Is there a second? Second. Harder. Roll call, please. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on substitute bill number one for bill number 40, there are seven ayes. Substitute bill number one for bill number 40 is finally passed. Moving on to resolutions. Madam Chair, we have five resolutions this evening. Resolution number one, introduced by council members Clancy, Days, Dunaway, Fitch, Webb, Trachis, and Harder. Please read the resolution, Kevin. Yes, ma'am. Resolution, whereas Alexis Williams graduated summa cum laude from Howard University, where she studied psychology and sports management and received her Juris Doctor from St. Louis University School of Law in 2018, and whereas Alexis emerged as a leader as an undergraduate student and member of Gamma Sigma Sigma National Sorority Incorporated, and whereas Alexis continued to develop as a leader in law school, serving as 2017 to 2018 president of SLU Law's Black Law Students Association and in two regional office positions within the National Black Law Students Association, including Midwest Regional Vice Chair, and whereas 
Alexis began her legal career as a legal consultant for LexisNexis and as Special Victims Unit Prosecutor for the City of St. Louis Circuit Attorney's Office. And whereas, happily, Alexis came to work for St. Louis County as an Assistant County Counselor and focuses on civil litigation, property maintenance, municipal compliance, contracts, and CARES Act matters. And whereas, despite a heavy workload, Alexis is committed to serving as a leader in her profession and is a board member for the Women Lawyers Association of Greater St. Louis and was recently elected by her peers to the Office of Secretary for the Young Lawyers Division of the Bar Association of Metropolitan St. Louis for the 2021 to 2022 bar year. And whereas Alexis also somehow finds the time to serve the larger community as an advisory board member for the urban community service organization, Young Voices with Action Incorporated. And whereas Alexis's efforts to improve the legal profession in our community have not gone unnoticed as Missouri Lawyers Media has named her as one of 20, only 20 2021 diversity and inclusion award honorees in the state of Missouri. And Focus St. Louis recently selected her as one of 30 participants in the spring 2021 cohort for its Emerging Leaders Program. And whereas, when an individual has demonstrated such a strong commitment to public service, leadership, and the betterment of her community, it is appropriate for the Council and all St. Louis Countyans to pause and take note. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri, as follows. Section 1. The County Council expresses its strongest appreciation of and an admiration for Assistant County Counselor Alexis Williams and recognizes her as a role model in our community. Thank you. Um, I move for adoption of resolution number one. Is there a second? Second. 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 Um, all in favor, um, roll call. We have to have roll call. Sorry. Councilmember Dice. Aye. Councilmember Dunaway. Aye. Councilmember Fitch. Congratulations, Alexis. Aye. Councilmember Webb. Congratulations, Alexis. Well, job well done. Aye. Councilmember Clancy. It's an honor to honor Alexis today. I'm sorry we didn't get to hear from her during our public forum, but you are noticed and appreciated, Alexis. So with that, I. Councilmember Trakas. Alexis, we're lucky to have you. Congratulations, I. Councilmember Harder. Congratulations, I. Madam Chair, on resolution number one, there are seven ayes. Uh, resolution number one is adopted. Uh, Alexis, let me also add my congratulations to you as well. Uh, graduating summa cum laude is nothing to sneeze at, particularly for one of our prestigious HBCUs, Howard University. Uh, we do, do know that our current vice president is now uh, was a graduate of Howard University, and perhaps you will fall. Uh, follow in her footsteps. So congratulations again. And we're very sorry that you could not be heard this evening. But please know we are very proud to have you as a member of our team. Thank you. Moving on to resolution number two, introduced by council members Harder and Fitch. Please read the full resolution. Resolution. Whereas St. Louis County restaurants and bars have done their best and invested thousands of dollars to comply with county health orders and protect their employees and patrons while continuing to offer food and beverage service. These preventative measures include, but are not limited to, removal of tables and chairs, use of QR scan or single use menus, PPE for staff, tent rental and outdoor theaters. And whereas occupancy and indoor dining restrictions due to COVID have made it difficult for many restaurants to remain in business. And whereas 32 restaurants had permanently closed in the county when the last resolution on restaurants was adopted by the council on September 29, 2020. And since then an additional 13 restaurants have permanently closed, including but not limited to Copia Restaurant in Clayton, Marley's Bar and Grill in Ferguson, New Day Gluten-Free Bakery in Clayton, Pueblo Nuevo in Hazelwood, Mayana Mexican Kitchen in Clayton, 
Melting Pot and Unincorporated St. Louis County, Sardella and Clayton, Wasabi Sushi Bar in Warson Woods, Giovanni's Kitchen in Clayton, Mango Peruvian Cuisine in Unincorporated St. Louis County, Olive Street Cafe in Creve Coeur, Symbol in Kirkwood, ZZZ Pizza and Salad in Unincorporated St. Louis County, and whereas the Independent Restaurant Coalition has recently stated that up to 85% of independently owned restaurants could close due to the pandemic business restrictions, and whereas contact tracing data released by New York State show that restaurants and bars account for only 1.4% of community spread, and the St. Louis County Department of Public Health has failed to supply any empirical data to indicate that restaurants are a significant source of infection in St. Louis County. And whereas a new peer-reviewed study published January 5, 2021, analyzed data from several different countries that implemented, quote, non-pharmaceutical interventions, end quote, to quell the spread of COVID-19. England, France, Germany, Iran, Italy, the Netherlands, Spain, and the US, and compared their outcomes to those of South Korea and Sweden, which opted for less restrictive <laughs> voluntary measures. The study found, quote, no clear significant beneficial effect to more restrictive measures on case growth in any country and failed to find an additional benefit to stay at home orders and business closures, end quote. And whereas in October, 2020, the World Health Organization came out in opposition to lockdown measures because of their devastating side effects. Dr. David Nabarro, WHO Special Envoy stated, quote, so we really do appeal to all world leaders, stop using lockdowns as your primary control method, end quote. And whereas Governor Cuomo of New York said on January 11th, 2021, quote, we simply cannot stay closed until the vaccine hits critical mass. The cost is too high. We will have nothing left to open. We must reopen the economy, economy but we must do it smartly, end quote. And whereas Chicago Mayor Lightfoot said her city's bars and restaurants need to be allowed to reopen, quote, as quickly as possible, end quote, citing that such easing of restrictions could possibly reduce other riskier behavior, like private gatherings where attendees do not practice infection control measures, such as social distancing or wearing masks. And whereas the positivity rate in the county is down 13.4% from its high in mid-November, and down 16.6% from its all-time high at the start of the pandemic to a current rate of 8.1 per 100,000. <laughs> Hospital intensive care unit, ICU, bed occupancy is also trending downward from a high of 25% of all staffed ICU beds being occupied by COVID patients to approximately 13% of those beds most recently. And whereas, according to State of Missouri records, all registered St. Louis County vaccinators collectively have already administered the first dose of the two dose vaccines to 6.4% of the county's total population, which puts it ahead of the next seven most populous counties in Missouri. The first dose of the vaccine has an efficacy rate of at least 50% as reported in clinical trials and possibly as high as 80%. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri as follows. Section one, given that the county positivity rate is on the downward trend, vaccinations continue to increase among our most vulnerable populations and hospital ICU COVID occup occupancy rates are also trending downward. The county council requests the following. A, that St. Louis County Department of Public Health, DPH, raise the allowable occupancy of bars, restaurants, and churches to 50% immediately. Other infection control measure, measures recommended for these businesses shall remain in place. And B, that, deep, that the DPH public health order issued December 30, 2020, be rewritten to narrowly, narrowly define those activities in which DPH feels people should not participate, since those activities are most likely to spread infection, as opposed to the current form, which disallows all activities except those deemed access acceptable by DPH. Section two, the administrative director shall send certified copies of this resolution to County Executive Sam Page and Dr. Emily DeSette and Ms. Spring Smith, co-directors of the Department of Public Health. Councilman Harder. 
Mad Madam Chair, I move to adopt resolution number two this evening. Is there a second? Second fit. Discussion? Discussion, please. Discussion. Councilwoman Clancy. Yes. Um, I um, spoke to the Department of Public Health today about this, this resolution. It's really important to me that anytime we get um, any policies or resolutions related to public health that we, we vet it through those officials. Um, and I, I, they shared with me some concerns about the accuracy of some of the statistics you shared. Um, I also would like to note that um, one of the things called for um, was put into place just hours ago. So um, there was an announcement from the county executive's office and the Department of Public Health that restaurants and bars will move to 50% capacity um, beginning this Thursday. So I thought that was a good development to make sure the public understands tonight. Um, and that was the result of the continued collaboration with restaurant owners. So given those two conditions, I will be abstaining from this. Thank you. Madam Chair. Councilman Fitch. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, I wanted to commend Councilman Harder for sponsoring this resolution. Uh, but I really do believe, and I, I do agree with uh, Councilwoman Clancy when she said that the county executive has announced that on Thursday that restaurants will be able to have 50% occupancy. But I also believe that's only, he did that only as a result of Councilman Harder sponsoring this resolution days earlier than his decision to allow these restaurants to open up to 50%, as well as the fast track of legislation in the General Assembly that would give this council oversight of the uh, county executive and the Department of Public Health order. So I just wanted to uh, commend Councilman Harder for that. And uh, of course, I'll be supporting this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any further discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Abstain. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Abstain. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on resolution number two, resolution number two <laughs> there are five ayes and two abstentions. Resolution number two is adopted. Moving on to resolution number three this evening, introduced by Council Member Webb. Yes, would you please read the resolution? Yes, ma'am. Resolution, whereas Annie Benson was born on August 13, 1935, in Kilmichael, Mississippi, to William and Julia Bibbs, and whereas Annie graduated from Vashon High School and later earned her bachelor's degree from Harristow State College, where she majored in education and minored in special education. And whereas in 1954, Annie married Paul Benson and they lovingly raised four children, Paula, Legrand, Janet, and Renita. And whereas Annie and Paul became owners of Benson's Market in the Ville neighborhood before Annie began her career as an educator as a reading teacher at Hamilton Elementary School, the same school attended by all four of her children. And whereas, Annie later became a special education teacher at Clinton Middle School, and even after her retirement from Northwest Middle School, she was often asked to come back to the school due to her, her extraordinary skills in decorating and organizing classrooms. And whereas, Paul accepted the position of pastor of Mount Vernon MB Church in 1972, and Annie enthusiastically threw herself into the role of First Lady of the Church, dedicating herself to the choir, youth programs, renovating and decorating church facilities, fundraising, and even providing transportation for many church members. And whereas First Lady Emeritus Annie Benson, as she came to be known, passed away on January 27, 2021, preceded in death by her parents and five of her siblings, Helen Strong, Emma Perry, Diane Shelton, and William and John Albert Tibbs. And whereas First Lady Emeritus Annie Benson was widely known for her design talents and exquisite style, including her one-of-a-kind hats, 
but it is her love of and devotion to family, friends, students, and parishioners for which she will be remembered. Whereas it is appropriate for the county council and all St. Louis Countyans to pause and recognize a woman so devoted to family, faith, and community. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the county council of St. Louis County, Missouri, as follows. Section one, the county council offers its deepest condolences to the loved ones of First Lady Emeritus Annie Benson, especially her children, her surviving siblings, Mary Hayden, Cynthia Shaw, and Ronald Bibbs, 13 grandchildren and 16 great grandchildren and her goddaughter Yolanda Austin, as well as her extended family, friends in the Mount Vernon Church family. Section two, the administrative director shall send a certified copy of this resolution to Mrs. Benson's family as a permanent token of the council's sincere condolences and appreciation of a life well lived. Councilwoman Webb. Madam Chair, I move that we adopt this resolution. Um, second. Thank you. Uh, resolution number three has been moved and second. Please call the roll. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Webb. I just want to take this moment to make sure that we recognize that it is people loving mothers and wives and first ladies like Ms. Benson that devote themselves and committed to do art, extraordinary work for our community and for them we are forever grateful and thankful. So to the family we are, uh, we send out our condolences during this time of bereavement but we want you to know that your, your wife, your mother, your first lady made a difference in our community. Thank you. My vote is aye. <laughs> Council Member Clancy? Aye. Council Member Tragus? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Madam Chair, on resolution number three, there are seven ayes. Resolution number three is adopted. Resolution number four, introduced by Council Member Clancy. Yes. Um, Kevin, your vocal cords are getting a workout tonight, but please read the resolution. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Resolution. Whereas Black Lives Matter and whereas Missouri, including St. Louis County, has a long and dishonorable history of racial inequity, as recognized by the Ferguson Commission in its forward through Ferguson report, quote, the data suggests time and again that our institutions and existing systems are not equal and that this has racial repercussions. Black people in the region feel those repercussions when it comes to law enforcement, the justice system, housing, health, education, and income, end quote. And whereas this long-term inequity has contributed to a lack of trust between residents and law enforcement, and quote, the resulting distrust makes citizens feel unsafe in their own communities, and makes it harder for police to effectively and respectfully do their job, end quote. And whereas trust between the public and the law enforcement community is the foundation of public safety. Public trust is improved when the community sees common sense police reforms put into place to improve the manner in which law enforcement interacts with them. And therefore, enacting common sense police reforms <laughs> improves public safety for all residents. And whereas Missouri Senate Bill 60 introduced in the Missouri Senate by State Senator Brian Williams includes such common sense police reforms as banning chokeholds, limiting no knock warrants, ensuring officers are held accountable for their actions and preventing sexual misconduct with detainees, among others. And whereas Senate Bill 60 has support from the law enforcement community, including the Kansas City Fraternal Order of Police and the Missouri Police Chiefs Association, as well as from civil rights organizations, including the Missouri NAACP, and whereas the council believes this legislation will make our streets safer and will improve the relationship between law enforcement and the communities they serve. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri, as follows. Section one, the St. Louis County Council joins the growing number of organizations and individuals supporting Senate Bill 60 
as legislation that will improve the relationship between law enforcement and the communities they serve and thereby make our streets safer. Further, the council calls upon the Missouri State Legisl Legislature to pass and for the governor of the state of Missouri to sign this legislation. Section two, the administrative director shall send certified copies of this resolution to the Honorable Brian Williams, state senator, the Honorable Joan Rizzo, Missouri Senate Minority Floor Leader, and the Honorable Tony Lutkemeyer, Chair of the Missouri Senate Judiciary and Civil and Criminal Jurisprudence, <laughs> Jurisprudence Committee. Thank you. Councilwoman um, Clancy. May I make a motion, please? Please. Um, I move for adoption of resolution number four. Is there a second? Second. Discussion, please. Discussion. Councilman Fitch. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Councilwoman Clancy, I wholeheartedly support this. Uh, I, as a member, current member of the Missouri Police Chiefs Association, supported it as it was drafted. I would also just note, I did notice your uh, resolution talked about it, a support from the Kansas City Fraternal Order Police. Uh, I didn't know if you knew that the St. Louis County Police Officers Association also helped craft this bill. They actually helped Senator Williams with this bill. So they support it as well. So I will be supporting this and uh, glad to do that. Thank you. Great, thank you Madam for that Chair. information. Madam Chair. Madam Councilwoman Chair. Dunaway. Uh, may I please be a co-sponsor of this resolution? Madam Clerk, would you make sure that that happens, please? Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. And let me also add, uh, 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 Councilwoman Clancy, uh, Ferguson is in my district and I was well aware of the uh, uh, the incidents that happened there and continue to happen there. And so I appreciate this. Uh, Brian Williams is my senator and uh, he has worked on this since this summer and has uh, also included me in some of the discussions that have taken place. And so I do appreciate you moving forward with this and I will also be voting aye. Uh, any further discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway? Aye. Council Member Fitch? Aye. Council Member Webb? Aye. Council Member Clancy? Aye. Council Member Trakas? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Madam Chair, on bill, I'm sorry, on resolution number four, there are seven ayes. Resolution number four is adopted. Moving on. Resolution number five introduced by Council Member Clancy. Um, please read the resolution, Kevin. <laughs> resolution, whereas St. Louis County residents have faced and continue to face significant economic hardships as a result of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, and whereas due to a possible administrative error made by the Missouri Department of Labor and Industrial Relations, the agency overpaid some applicants employment security payments, and whereas it would impose a severe financial burden for the state to force those applicants who the Department of Labor and Industrial Relations overpaid to return payments, most of which has likely been spent by these individuals who have suffered unemployment during the pandemic. And whereas, according to public proceedings in the Missouri General Assembly, members of the Missouri General Assembly believe that the, gov the governor of Missouri may be able to help the Missouri families by taking executive action to forgive any employment security payments that were fully funded by monies received directly from the federal government and that have been inadvertently but non-fraudulently distributed to Missouri residents during the COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas the federal government has authorized states pursuant to federal staff and guidance that the amounts of such non-fraudulent overpayments can be forgiven if collecting the overpayments would be contrary to equity and good conscience. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri, as follows. Section one, the St. Louis County Council calls upon the governor of Missouri to forgive to the fullest extent allowable any inadvertent but non-fraudulent overpayments of unemployment compensation that were received by St. Louis County residents and that were fully funded by monies received directly from the federal government. 
Section two, the administrative director shall send a certified copy of this resolution to the Honorable Michael L. Parson, Governor of Missouri. Thank you. I move for adoption of resolution number five. You say a second? Second. Uh, please call the roll. Council member Days. Aye. Council member Dunaway. Aye. Council member Fitch. Aye. Council member Webb. Aye. Council member Clancy. Aye. Council member Trakas. Aye. Council member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on resolution number five, there are seven ayes. A resolution number five has been adopted, and I again want to congratulate uh, Councilwoman Clancy for this. That was an expose or some kind of investigative report on Channel 4 last week uh, where they had several members, uh, several com community people who uh, expressed concern about this. Uh, Channel 4 took this up, and they were able to uh, make sure that those folks uh, continue to receive or did not have to return any of their unemployment benefits. So thank you for following up on that as well. Moving on to unfinished business. Yes, ma'am. Item number one. Please hold on the order of business and that will be the order. Item number two. Please hold on the order of business and that will be the order. Moving on to new business this evening, we have two prepared orders. Order number one is in the matter of communications from Jennifer Keating, Acting Director of Procurement, and Todd A. Martin, Director of Administration, requesting authorization to dispose of certain personal property. Madam Chair, I move for adoption of order number one. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Order number one is adopted. Moving on to order number two in the matter of the requests of the records manager for permission to destroy certain books, papers, and records of various county departments and offices. Madam Chair, I move for adoption of order number two. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Order number two is adopted. Moving on. Madam Chair, we're on adjournment. We are any uh, other business to come before the council, Councilman Carter? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, I just wanna remind everyone that this Sunday is Valentine's Day. And now that our restaurants are open to 50% capacity, that uh, you need to set an appointment for you with your significant other and take that person out to dinner and spend a lot of money on Sunday at all of our restaurants in St. Louis County. Eat local. Eat Thank local. You. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Councilwoman Clancy. Um, as a reminder, Councilwoman Dunaway and I are co-hosting a town hall with health department officials um, about vaccine distribution in St. Louis County. That will be on Thursday evening, the 11th at 6 p.m. Um, you can check my Facebook page um, for more information or reach out to my office if you would like more information about attending. Um, you can reach out to my assistant at cgibson at stlouisco.com. Anything else? Madam Chair. Councilman Fitch. Just wanted to welcome Kevin McKenna to the team. I thought he did a great job tonight. Thank you. Welcome, Kevin. I agree. Thank you. Anyone else? Madam Chair, motion to adjourn. Uh, one second, please. I want to have, um, last week, I want uh, everyone to be aware of where we are in terms of uh, the litigation. Uh, there was a request made to the judge on last week uh, to enter an interim order preventing me from acting as council chair. And I want everyone to know that that motion was denied. And as such, I will continue to act in the capacity that the majority of members of this council have decided. And as such, I will continue to operate as the chair. And therefore, I am as effective immediately. 
I am appointing uh, chairs to certain committees. Everyone, I want everyone to know that everyone was asked to either be a chair or to be a member of a committee. And the people who I'm about to read or have consented to do that. So the Revenue and Personnel Committee will be chaired by Councilman Fitch. The Justice, Health and Welfare Committee will be chaired by Councilwoman Webb. The Disabilities Committee would be chaired by myself as well as the Public Improvements Committee. The Charter Position Committee Chair will be Councilman Harder and the Ethics uh, Commission Committee will be chaired by Councilman Harder as well. I am going to ask, we will be having several Committee of the Holes uh, pretty, pretty, pretty soon and I'm going to ask that uh, many of you try and hold uh, Tuesdays uh, particularly Tuesdays after 11 open for that. Uh, and at this particular point, I want to uh, um, have Committee of the Whole on Bill number 44, Bill number 49, and Bill number 51. And my office will be in touch with each of you to test to see your availability. Motion to adjourn, I believe, was in order by Councilman Harder. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. You all have a good evening and stay safe.